Hey, what's up everyone? It's the father of all mage, Dolbeck in Naramo again for another video in New World Aeternum. Are you ready for the best tips for raid right now? Alright, so let's get straight into it. Right now, as you can see, I specced into healer because there's not a lot of good healer into gorgon raid and most of them are doing it wrong so as you can see i have a ruby into my void gauntlet oh it's a ruby why does a healer have a ruby into his void gauntlet because your healer can use a void blade and hit with it all right he can do long range attack too if you feel non-safe and stuff like that but i just want to let you know that if your healer pull out a void blade, he's gonna get 20% fortify and he's gonna be harder to kill. He's gonna leech from the boss too. If your healer is just running around and, and uh, throwing attack from distance, uh, he's gonna be easier to kill by the boss almost, all right? There's like only until the last boss of the raid that it's pretty hard to get close to the boss for a healer. But the two other boss, you can just be there and void blade almost the, the whole time. And you, you see on the second boss of the phase, there's like the second boss of the raid, there's a adds phase. And during that adds phase, if your healer is not there void blading with you, well, you're missing DPS and this is bad. All right. So... You want a fucking ruby into your void blade, alright? I took this void gauntlet, why? Because of the rogue, it's pretty hard, like, you're gonna do backstab 90% of the time as a healer with the void blade, so rogue, gonna be probably your best perk, but this void gauntlet, you can only get it in barnacle and black powder, and it's an illegal perk to have rogue on your void gauntlet. So the Void Gauntlet you're probably gonna have and find gonna be some basic Void Gauntlet like Bless, Lifesteal, Enchanted, or like Rupture, King, Bless, uh, stuff like that, you see. Right now with Bless and uh, Rogue, I, I feel pretty good and the Nullify Oblivion is not because it's Nullifying. Yes, it's great to Nullify, but it's mostly for the, the cooldown reduction I wish. I had something better like the Rupture instead of the Oblivion, but it's still amazing because I want to help DPS because uh, you're going to have a main healer and an off healer and I'm going to show you the off healer build first and then the main healer can the build first, uh, second, all right? So you're going to see uh, I have 45 Sacred Ground, but you can have Divine uh, I think Fortify Sacred Ground is just a bit better. Why? Because uh, you don't want your your uh, DPS to get one tap. And by having some Fortify, sometimes it's the only thing that's going to save them from getting one tap. Uh, the Divine Embrace is great if you have some DPS that have more than 100 con. But when your DPS have less than 100 con... Uh, there's a lot of time that you will not have time to use a Divine Embrace on them and save their life. And if they get their life low, guess what? They can use a potion like everyone. So yeah, you better to prevent them from taking damage than uh, Ripper Ring because they take damage. You see what I mean? So I think Fortify Sacred Ground is kind of the best perk for the off end. And then you got the Divine. And for the main, you want uh, 45 Sacred Ground of, or the Orb of Protection. You can see I have an uh, example right there. Uh, bless, Refreshing Move, Mending Protection. This is amazing to do a AoE healer. So this is what the AoE healer going to run. So I guess I'm going to say both at the same time since it's, it's going to be easier like that because I'm going to have to show, to do two guide if I'm not, Hitting both at the same time so you just better fucking listen all right so yeah you have this sacred ground for your dps and yourself you're gonna put it and then you're gonna go into it and you're gonna void blade so you're not gonna die guess what you're not gonna die this is fun yay all right so 
you put a ruby into your void gauntlet so guess what right now you can put some fire harnessing into your gear and the fire harnessing actually gonna do something for you all right so you're just gonna put your five fucking piece and put it on and if you're the aoe healer and you struggle to find a piece with your perk and harnessing you can have one or two piece without harnessing it's fine but I just want to let you know that it's better if you have full harnessing and uh, you kind of want to reach that 50% empower cap. If you think you reach that 50% empower cap, 50 empower cap, then you don't need that much harnessing. But, uh, you know, with the Void Gauntlet, you're a healer. All the only uh, empower going to be like Unblivion and two or three passives. So... I think with fire harnessing that would be great because what you want to boost to you need to remember you want to boost your fire dps if you get some overall empower it's gonna just boost your void and fire dps but what you want is your fire dps to be to the roof all right so all my piece on this build is just some basic piece you see the most important thing in each one of those pieces is the fire harnessing. Yes, you can find better. It's not going to be that hard. If you get fire harnessing and like, uh, let's say you're in the boss fight that have slash, slash damage, you're going to have fire harnessing, slash conditioning, and like, uh, I don't know, man. You find a good third perk, like uh, shirking fortification, elemental aversion, uh, enchanted ward uh, you see what i mean uh, grit ward that depend a lot of on your build and most of the build don't have grit and so the perk depend a lot on your build and since you're a healer uh, the only thing that matter for you is your harnessing and your weapon perk the refreshing don't really matter because uh, you're gonna be able to heal enough without refreshing refreshing is nice but you better to put out more DPS than just have refreshing for some reason and heal more people that doesn't need healing, all right? So yeah, uh, you, you're gonna see uh, the fire kick. Oh, the fire kick feels so good. All right, so you're gonna read that and you're gonna use that and this is the fire kick you want. Maybe there's another fire kick that you want. Mm, cleanse people. Oh, no, no, no. But who cares? There's nothing to cleanse into that shit, bro. All right. So for the amulet, it's going to change depending on the fight. Like right now, I have the slash protection because the last fight I did was a slash boss or PvP. PvP, there's a lot of great swords. So yeah, it's the slash amulet. If you, there's a strike boss then a slash boss and then a nature boss so you want three amulet one two three all right and then if you have too much gear and you can make other gear you can make a nature build for the last boss but you can just change your amulet and that that's gonna be fine all right uh, like it's possible most of the people did it but if you go with five or like 150 con you, it's better to have the, the the good thing in your in your shit because if you don't have the good thing you better to go 100 con you see what i mean this is how it be it's bad but this is how it be uh so this kind of sucks it's like the worst probably item in this build the rt is good and the secret is good but uh, you know i'm not gonna spend for a third uh, perk you can have like healing breeze uh, something like that uh, refreshing there's a few good thing to have uh, i think the best to have would be seriously the elemental fire dps you got rt sacred fire elemental dps then you're set you're gonna void blade to the moon all right so for the earring il titos you're a healer you're gonna drink some mana pot il titos for you it feels so good uh, refreshing toast it feels so good uh, nimble mm, so good uh, yet you can use other stuff than nimble but i love nimble and you know why 
Nimbo, bro. All right. So the why use the infused regeneration potion? I tried the Serama, right? It's not because uh, I don't want to spend money. It's just because it come back faster. So it's going to help you regain and then regain and then regain. And it's just come back faster. So if you have an earring, like uh, endless thirst to like, uh, yeah, endless thirst, you're going to want that too. So it helps a lot. Uh, RT meal, don't sleep on that. I want you to have a couple hundred RT meal right there when you start your dungeon. I want you to have a couple hundred infused, punch, infused health potion when you start your dungeon. I want you to have a couple hundred regen potion when you start your dungeon. Insane for your fucking mana potion, alright? And if you don't have enough space in your inventory for some fucking weird reason I don't care about, well then you're gonna put them on the side right there you see i have some potion right there those potions are not into my inventory do you have some free potion slot on the side right there you see oh 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 i'm losing weight i'm losing weight you see <laughs> so this is how it be this is what you want so let's dive straight into the rest all right so the easiest way to heal, all right? Easiest way to heal would be to do that. And then have 100 con, all right? You have 100 con and then the rest in focus. All right? Yeah, like, like right now I have too much con because I just made this build like uh, right now because it's I have like three account and I'm like so confused and lost in all my gear because they just made that update. But you can listen to me because I still did this dungeon like I completed it like five times with uh, three different roll, all right? And I got top one in every mutation leaderboard like uh, Genesis, uh, Lazarus, uh, Divine, uh, Divide, uh, like every fucking dungeon, uh, the, the, the ice one, like the whatever, all right? So this is what you can do at the start. Uh, I'm gonna lower this to, to like for myself. I did heal this dungeon once with 35 con and it was possible. But I think my sweet spot could be 50 con because I'm a healer and I'm not there to take risk. You see what I mean? So going 5 con could be like throwing my group. Uh, so maybe I'm gonna just go 50 con or 100 con. I feel like 50 con could be the sweet spot. You're a healer, so it's fine if you have 100 con. You better have some some uh, DPS taking risk than you, all right? And then whatever you're going to take off in your con, you're going to add it to the int. And it as much like you see, <coughs> if you can reach 200 e uh, int, like you're the second healer. Your first healer gonna be like mostly focus and maybe with a bit of int like maximum 50 and this is gonna be your aoe either maximum 50 but your off heal can easy go to 200 uh, to 150 right there like why not like uh, right right now I, I have a bit too much I, I just take a bit of that off and then i'm gonna take off some con and you see, I'm gonna reach, and it's not gonna be that much a big loss because I'm just healing DPS, and I'm gonna help the DPS too. The elemental damage is my ruby, and the ruby they are weak to it, so you are going to do 10% more damage that they are weak to. So this is kind of crazy, you see. So this is why I think reaching this could be one of the best thing you can do. But for that. You're gonna need to play like 50 con probably and if you can if you can't then 150 yeah like right there it's 150 i think and then it, it's 200 man i'm like so confused they like ju just changed everything oh yeah this one is 150 sorry so 100 and 150 it's not too hard to reach seriously it's not too hard to reach 150 and it's a big boost into the dps so if you have one healer that reached that really really clean 
So for the weapon mastery, there's a couple things that are viable, right? Since I was off healing, I was using this. But when you're gonna be main healing, you're almost better to go with Orb of Protection, uh, Beacon, and Sacred. And this is mostly going to be all around the tank. You can use Orb of Protection and Beacon sometime on yourself. Uh, the Beacon with the Ace can help you a lot. Like, I mean, if there's a Beacon with the Ace around the tank or around the DPS, they're all going to move faster. So, they're going to be able to, like, you see there's some boss fight that uh, everyone, like, there's three people in the group that's going to get a mark over their head and then they're going to have some DPS coming from under the ground, under them. And then it's going to hit everyone that's going to be around them. So having a beacon over the group that's going to give haste, it's going to help them to run out of the group and not kill everyone by stacking too much. And then it's the same for the blunderbuss. If someone have a blunderbuss and put some haste on the ground, uh, it's going to help everyone to declump. So declumping is, is a main thing and having an AOE eater that can help with the declump sometimes can be so much beneficial and you're gonna see into the last fight the last fight there's some stuff everywhere on the ground and you need to run all the time to cleanse people and just not to be into it so having some ace once again in that place could be very good so yes i think speed of light is not a way to throw into this dungeon for the ewe healer but right now since i'm not an ewe healer i'm not using it all right <clears throat> So, we all know the EOE healer, it's going to be different than that. And there's millions of guides about how to do good EOE heal on internet. And I probably already have some on my channel too. <laughs> so yeah, you're going to better subscribe, my fucker. This is the Void Gauntlet build. What happened with this build? Uh, the most important thing that you need to remember is mostly the Void Blade, Oblivion, and the Rupture. The passives, you can try to change it a bit just for fun. Uh, like you see, uh, the critical chance while ability are on cooldown, you are already eating mob in the back. You're supposed to do backstab with your void gauntlet, void blade. So the critical chance you don't need it since you are already gonna do critical with your void blade. So this is why I did not use this because with most of the the build that you're gonna do with the void blade, you're gonna use this because the cooldown reduction is pretty good. And Harvest Drain, you're not going to use it. So I took this off to be able to get the Harvest uh, Rupture of Essence. And that, and, uh, you know, I just take this. You can have this or this change almost nothing because you don't want to range attack. Uh, just make almost no sense. And Mana Cost, I think this one is good though. So why you want the Rupture, you see... Uh, when hitting the target, the people are gonna gain stamina. The stamina is some free dodge, and free dodge is a moment that you are immune, and being immune is the most OP thing in any video game, alright? So, fire projectile, na, 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 na. look at this. Healing anyone that hit the target for 20% of the damage done, anyone, alright, for 20% of the damage done, and this is not even uh, talking about the focus or anything, this is just 20% of the damage done, any DPS getting back as a heal, so this is why you need your healer to have it. And then, there's another one that scale from focus, within 4 meters of the afflicted target, so the people around the boss are healed 80% of your weapon damage when Rupture ends, so it's gonna save some life. Rupture is amazing. Oblivion is amazing, I don't even need to tell you why Oblivion is amazing, because if you don't understand this, you better go play another game, right? <laughs> So, uh, you see, when you open the Void Blade, you gain 45 for 5 seconds. Just when you open the Void Blade, so you become tanky. You're so tanky, bro. And then you get the Enfeebling. Like, if you read that uh, somewhere, that it said that, uh, look, attacking 
inside the oblivion weekend five percent stack up three times this is so important bro so you go on the mob like you see when the ads phase come and there's a lot of ads that dps need to kill and it's pretty hard you put the oblivion there in the middle of all the ads all your dps is gonna gain 50% more DPS and then you're gonna hit them with like they're gonna hit the mob the all the mob gonna get some weekend and then you're gonna put some ran onto it with your void blend void blade so the the mob gonna die 15% quicker and, and you see it just you need to read you need to read your passive whatever it's your build please read read your passive and if you don't want to do it just come on my YouTube and copy and paste my build. And if you see people with bad build, just tell them Tolbeck Entertainment is there for you. He's gonna fix up your build. You have a spear and a rapier in your hand. The rapier is scaling of intel and dex while your spear is scaling of strength and dex. It don't make sense. Why are you using this combo? This is trash and Dolbeck is there for telling you. But I think Spear and Rapier is good in PvE. But this is another topic. So you see, I just changed two pieces. I have this piece that I had in somewhere in my locker. And I had this that I had on my PvP set in my gear set. And you see, like this right now, I have 100 con and I can even go lower. I still cannot reach 50 con, but I'm pretty sure with 100 con, I'm already gonna do better than most of the healer. Mostly that because I'm gonna be at least void blading while the other are not. And uh, you're off either, so you don't need to have all in focus. It just, it, 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 you're gonna like divine embrace people way too hard for no reason. And if you can. Uh, lower it down to 50 con then you're gonna add it into focus uh, you can take off a bit of intel and put it in focus too if you think your group lack uh, eel i feel like the int and the focus gonna depend a lot on your group and if they are good or not uh, if you see that they need more eel you can just take some off but i think that when you just get into the group at the start you should be almost like this and then you adapt to the situation it's a, if it's too easy you lower your con and you put more int if it's too hard you're gonna lower your int and put too much you're gonna put more focus and you try to never put your con over 100 and it's the same for every role you're not supposed to have someone over 100 con and the tank can have over 100 con i feel like 350 is a sweet spot you're gonna get uh the strength to like 200 points and then you're gonna put the rest in con i think it's gonna be 350 or like 400 it's gonna be far enough so you see for the gameplay we have something really special for you today we had a healer into our raid and he kind of got kicked because he was not doing it right so we're gonna review that sequence and see what he did wrong so it's probably going to be one of the best way to learn how to heal since he was doing it wrong you see what i mean all right for this gameplay part you see uh you you need to make sure that you don't kind of stay behind the tank even if you're a ranger dps or a healer and you're at huge distance the boss is gonna cleave through the tank there's like a attack that is similar to the path of destiny and that's gonna hit everyone by the tank and it's the same for a lot of boss fight uh the healer right now you can see is not void blading is just there the dog father uh what he's doing is kind of almost useless because uh, we already have two healer and the other healer is mine is uh, like healing the the tank so this dude right now is just spamming his life staff for no reason since nobody need heal so the moment that the off healer gonna need to spend the most time healing is during that ads phase right there you just need to make sure that you're using your void blade you put all your e on the ground and then use your void blade as much as you can because you see those ads need to die badly if those ads don't die you see the boss gonna suck them up and they're gonna not only all die and it's gonna give empower to the boss but uh, 
when the boss is draining them more than that there's mob that he's draining he's gonna drain everyone life around but this is one of the reason why i think the blunder boss can be good into this dungeon is because uh the boss gonna drain the life of the mobs and by having a blunder boss user is gonna just drain less so yeah uh overall like this run it was what was bad is uh when we changed healer we we passed it straight up like the only thing that was bad was that healer called dogfather you see is using a rapier like why are you using a rapier into a dungeon it's the worst thing you can do seriously and he don't even have a ruby into his rapier he just use it as an escape ability but if you have the Void Gauntlet with the Ruby into it, what happens is uh, you're going to not only more do more DPS, but you're going to survive easier. Because when you pull out the Void Blade, you gain 20% Fortify, 20% Fortify, 20% Armor. And when you have Oblivion on the ground and you hit someone while you're into the Oblivion, it's gonna do, the the mob gonna gain a five percent stack enfeebling that can stack three times. So you put your oblivion there, you give three void blade it, and with those three void blade it, the damage of the mob gonna reduce by fifteen percent, and then uh, there's gonna be the rend for the void blade blade, so your DPS gonna do more DPS. The uh, Oblivion gonna do Empower, so your DPS gonna do more DPS. So the 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 ads gonna die quicker, and you're gonna have to heal less because right now you just have to heal constantly. Uh, this yeah, it just make no sense. Like you're not supposed to heal 100% of the time. And guess what? Your Void Blade is healing. You're supposed to have rupture. Look how I'm dying right there. It's the worst healer I've ever seen. All right, I'm just there waiting for heal on his side. I was on the side of him waiting. You you see, like this is the worst thing that you don't want to happen. It's just that. And yeah. So with your void gauntlet, you're gonna have the rupture. The rupture is so important. You're gonna leech when eating the mob. So I hope. Everyone's gonna like this video. Uh, I'm a good. I'm gonna do more on the subject for sure because I feel like this one is not deep enough. And uh, I'm the next one that I'm gonna do gonna be more about the gameplay aspect. This one was more about the build. But yeah, each phase I'm gonna describe it what the eater is. So I wish everyone a good day. Thanks for watching this video. Tell someone you love them. Peace out.